Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Turn the Page podcast. I am one of your librarian hosts, Stacey Mencher, and I am joined w- by, with, I don't know the word. <laughs> I'm Jessica, and I am the Community Engagement Specialist at Syosset Public Library. Hi, I am TJ Newman, author of Falling. Welcome to Turn the Page. Yes. This book has been getting so much buzz. So much buzz. And like everyone at work that we know has read it has just been loving it like five stars all around on Goodreads. That makes my day. Thank you so much. And and I have to say that when I hear um, reception like that coming from librarians, it takes a, it carries a lot more weight. Oh. We're, we we love talking books. <laughs> we do. Pretty much everything. Um, but this, so this book has been, it's been blurbed as Jaws in the Air. Yes. I, I, I have a question about that, but for listeners, it's currently June as we're recording this. The book does come out on July 6th. So it's not out yet, but very, very excited. The library has copies on order contact reader services but to go back to that blurb the blurb so it's it's jaws at 30,000 feet but it's also been compared to speed which comparison do you like better or compliment do you like better I mean if you're being you know put in the same sentence as jaws or speed or die hard I've heard all that I mean like I'm a I'm a child of the 90s I grew up on those films and those kind of stories that's why I'm writing these kind of stories it's what I love so just being in the same room as any of those is mind blowing it's funny because speed was what was coming to my mind. I remember being a tween and sitting in the theater and watching speed and that being like one of the most anxiety ridden movies yeah. I've seen up to then. And I got that feeling while I was reading um, Falling. I, I so appreciate that. And for, and for the Jaws, I think also somebody said this the other day and I thought, you know what, that's totally right. They both kind of tap into some sort of elemental existential fear this idea of like open water or you know yeah. these are very elemental simple concepts that tap into something like very deep in the human psyche so tell us about how this book came about yeah this book came about um from a flight that I was working because before I was a a writer I was um a flight attendant and I was a flight attendant for 10 years and I was working a flight, a uh, flight from LA to New York, which is uh, also the, the path that's, that's told in the book. Um, and I'm working a flight, it's a red eye, and I'm standing at the front of the plane and I'm looking out at the passengers who are all asleep. It's dark, it's cold, everyone's sleeping, it's quiet. And I have this thought that their lives, all of our lives are, in the hands of the pilots. And for the first time I had sort of this, this thought of the flip side of that, which is with that much power and responsibility, how vulnerable does that make a commercial pilot? And it, it was just a thought that I couldn't shake. And a few days later I was flying a different trip with a different set of pilots and um, by then the, the concept had kind of solidified in my mind into like a, a more concrete scenario. So one day I just kind of threw out to the captain that I was with, hey, what would you do if um, your family was kidnapped and you were told that if you didn't crash the plane, they would be killed? What would you do? And the look on his face terrified me because I could tell he had no idea what he would do. And it was in that moment that I knew I had my first book. That's amazing. Wow. 
And of course, was it speed was the one where it was like, okay, what do you do? Right. That was that what, what, um, was it Dennis Hopper? I'm trying to remember who the bad guy was in that. Um, Yep. Spoiler alert. It was Dennis Hopper. Yes. (laughs) I I love, I love the whole spoiler alerts like decades after it happened, but yeah, (laughs) you know, like, okay, what do you do? What do you do? Right. And I think that that's part of, you know, again, if we're going back to sort of elemental concepts, you know, that, that tap deep into the human psyche, it's like, okay, if you're put in a position where this is a big darned, if you do darned, if you don't situation, what do you do? These ethical dilemmas, they, they fascinate me and, and speed is like that, you know, and, and falling is like that. And I think, you know, it, it I think they also resonate because the reader reader and the viewer naturally put themselves in that position and go, well, what would I do? I'm not a pilot, but what would I do if I was put in that situation? Oh, definitely. Like that, it, it almost reminds me in a different way of playing on that, of the reader or viewer of, I don't know if you've ever gotten this comparison, but now it popped in my head of the Saw franchise, um, specifically the third movie where spoilers, people, there's a man who has to go through stuff and get rid of things from his son to save people from Jigsaw's trap. And it's like, if you were in that thing, one of the things he has to do is burn all of his son's toys and his son, you realize, um, passed away from a drunk driver. And do you burn all your stuff to save a man that, you know, didn't help get justice on your son? It's a very different, like, you know, it just, it kind of makes me think of that or even on the lines because clearly horror has been on my brain recently of uh like zombie apocalypse what do you do like i'm at work now zombies are coming what do i do answer from a former co-worker is take the copy machine throw it out the window and zip out of there don't know how realistic that is but it's just i find it really interesting that you play upon that in the book of like what would you do in this situation how would you react because people do it all the time, no matter what they're viewing or reading. And it brings a really good discussion, very good discussion question for book clubs. Spoiler alert, everyone, this is a great book for your book club. And I think, I mean, if, if we're, that's why we read, right? Is, mm-hmm. is for that empathetic experience to, to get to spend, you know, a few days, you know, mentally walking in someone else's shoes. That's, that's what we do it for. And I think if you, I'm attracted to stories and I think it's a very, you know, natural reaction to be attracted to stories that, that do put you in that position where you're not just with someone else, you know, following in their shoes. You feel like an active participant that you are somehow what you're thinking and feeling is going to affect what they do. I, I want to mention, um, and this is no spoilers because we want people to read the book, how <laughs> much family and different types of families come into play in the story because you have the pilot and his family, um, his wife and children, there's their, their son who's about 10, I believe, and their daughter who's a baby. So um, you, whether, you know, is that a surprise baby? Uh, yes, but they, <laughs> it's a happy surprise. And their son is very sweet with her, which I think is great. Um, as the sister of a much younger brother, I, I have a soft heart for those dynamics. So you have that. Um, and, you know, the added stress that she's the wife of a pilot. Um, then you have the person who is hijacking the pilot from um, the ground, the one who's holding Mm -hmm. his family captive, uh, Sam, I believe. Um, He has some family dynamics going on as well, which are part of his motivation for what he's doing. But then you have the crew family, like, you know, with like the flight attendant, Joe, for instance, yeah, family. I mean, that was, um, I didn't set out for that to be such a big theme, but it just, I mean, it just, everything boils down to it. You know, when we're looking at why we do things, what our motivation is to do the things that we do in life, doesn't it almost always boil down to the people we love 
And for a lot of people, that's family. For me, that's family. For, you know, it could be friends, but it's, it's the people in our lives are what drive our choices in life. And also the people that we trust, because that's yeah. what makes a family too. It's not always it's not love, it's who we trust, you know. And when you're in a situation like, um, like in falling, the passengers have to trust this pilot, this crew that they don't really know, but the crew also has to trust each other. Absolutely. And that was something also, it's like, that's another layer of family and aviation is, it's a unique industry and it's a unique job in that the lines between coworker and friend and family become very blurry, very fast because it's just not an office job. We don't, you know, leave, we don't like clock out and then go home. We all go to the hotel together. We spend, you know, multiple days at a time. We spend holidays, you know, late nights, early mornings, weekends, like, and it's not just the circumstances that, that aviation puts you under are going to test you and the people that you're with, you have to trust. And so with that level of trust, almost inherent, almost just the moment you show up for your trip, you might not have ever flown with this person. You might not have ever laid eyes on this person, but you immediately have a bond and a level of trust that borders on a family relationship. And so when you're put in a circumstance like this, and then as soon as you, you know, add in the element of something going wrong, and now you're in an enclosed environment on the plane, which I've just always found to be so fascinating. It's like, now the passengers are involved. Look, we're all in this together. No one's coming in. No one's going out. You know, for the life of this flight, we're it. We're our own little group. And so the dynamics that that come out in a situation like that, it's just, it's fascinating. It is. I really like how you did explore that, the whole crew as a family, because I feel like a lot of the times if there's a movie or a book they're like a side character there's not like a focus on it and very rarely do I think you see in media or whatnot about that and you're right like I, I'm remembering a book that I read a few years ago where one of the characters was a flight attendant took time off went back to being a flight attendant and talks about yeah you know we did this you know flew from you know US to to Africa we stayed in this hotel we did this and like a little bit of the lifestyle but it's just, it's interesting because I feel like it gives people a glimpse into a whole other world that they don't necessarily imagine, but it's not that so far-fetched. Like it's not a fantasy, but it's just like, oh, this is cool. Like what if I lived like this, which I thought was cool. I'm just like, oh, but back to the, like just, I, I have to like applaud your writing style because you make the aspect of humanity in it of just, it's not just the straight cliche thriller of like, all right, this is it. You really give them aspects to kind of understand motivation behind things, what Sam did or how uh, the captain Bill comes to some of his decisions or his son. And that really does put you in their shoes and makes it nail biting. Like you're on the edge of your seat or like your bed <laughs> where I was reading it, where you're just like, oh my God, what's happening? Oh my God. I need to keep reading. You look at the clock and it's like midnight and you're like, I got to finish this book. I got to know what happens. So thank you for that. I love books where I'm just like, oh my God, like tell me, oh, can't stop, won't stop. That is oh, music to my ears, like an <laughs> overarching note that I have kind of like the mantra theme as I was writing this whole thing was just pacing. It was like, do <laughs> not let up. Don't ever let there be a moment where something isn't happening that the reader, you know, has to say, but wait, I have to turn this page. I have to turn this page to know. And that was, that was kind of my, my goal throughout the whole book. So that, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So when did you get started in aviation and how yeah. did you decide to make the flight to <laughs> authorhood? <laughs> Um, one ten eleven was my higher date. So January of, uh, 2011 was when I started flying with Virgin America. 
Um, and I only quit. I only put on my notice once I had a contract uh, with Simon & Schuster. So it uh, was about 10 years. It was 10 years almost. I, my, my 10 year pin actually arrived as everything was kind of uh, <laughs> happening. Um, yeah, how I got into aviation, my mom is a flight attendant and my sister is also a flight attendant. So I definitely grew up in the industry and I knew sort of what you were saying, Stacey, sort of these, you know, unique aspects of the job, the travel, the schedule, the flight benefits, all of that. I understood all of that, but I didn't pursue it initially. I studied musical theater in college and then I moved to New York and lived in New York for a few years. Um, you know, hacking at the old starving artist, trying to make it on Broadway dream, which was um, abject failure, <laughs> nonstop. I uh, did not um, succeed. And I moved back to Phoenix uh, with my tail between my legs, um, moved back in with my parents. And I was, you know, that mid twenties, don't know what I wanna do with my life, don't have a path don't know what's next. And it was then that um, I got a job at Changing Hands Bookstore, which is a local indie bookstore in Arizona. And it felt, um, it felt like coming home in a lot of ways. I've grown up going to the library, you know, Dobson Ranch Library and going to um, Changing Hands and, and just reading, you know, everything I could get my hands on and being surrounded by books and with people like you that love talking about books and want to do that all day long, it just, I mean, you know, this is the environment you work in. There's a, there's an energy to that. And I loved it. And it was also a relief because I found that I could continue to do creative work, but more privately. Whereas when I went to New York to be a theater actor, it was very public. It was very much, you know, hey, everybody, you know, I am moving to New York to make my dreams come true. And I failed, which was very public. Um, and I think once I moved back to Phoenix, I realized very quickly that my impulses as a creative person were never going to go away, period. They were never going to go away. But, but writing allowed me to express myself more privately without it being a public thing since I had gotten burned so badly when I was, you know, trying to, to hack my way in New York. Um, and, and so that's when I started writing again and I started writing stories and just privately, you know, on for myself. And when the opportunity to fly came up, um, I just, I knew it was a, an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Um, and I knew also that I would be able to continue to write while I flew. So that's when I interviewed, that's when I left the bookstore, that's when I started flying. And that is my really long answer to the very simple question that you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, so first of all, like one of my thoughts while I'm listening to all of that is with all of these adaptations, TV adaptations, movie adaptations, can things come full circle? Do you think we'll see flying the musical? <laughs> <laughs> I would give anything. I mean, that, that would be the longest con of like, all right, if I couldn't make it, you know, the first time around, I'll get there, you know, the back door. And now I'm in the director's seat. Ooh. <laughs> exactly. Wow. I, I love the thought of that. It's, you know, I come from away, which was a, a phenomenal, phenomenal musical that, that was about aviation and, and um, that set of circumstances. It was, Hey, you, why not? We'll put it out yeah, there. No, no, no. This. We will put this out into the universe. Falling the musical. I love it. <laughs> so seriously, have you been approached by any studios to adapt falling into um, media yet? I have not, but if anybody is listening to this podcast that knows anybody that would be interesting, come on forward. <laughs> First of all, we, when you talk about speed and die hard, everybody's looking for the next speed and die hard. Yeah. And this is it. I'll t Jessica, from, from your ears to any producers listening. <laughs> you talked about it a little bit before with playing into fears. How do you feel that readers or listeners, if there's an audio book, will feel getting back on a flight, having that reawoken fear? Like I'm 
I'm a good flyer. I'd like to say, I just go, okay. Like I either nowadays I'll like fall asleep and just like sleep the whole flight or, you know, read a book, something like that. But my husband gets very anxious on planes and is like, his first thought is like, we're all going to die, especially with like the briefest bit of turbulence. But how do you think that'll factor in? You know, a response that I've gotten, um, fairly frequently from people who've, who've read falling, which I wasn't expecting, but I really appreciate is this response of, you know what, I'm a, I'm a very fearful flyer. I've always had a fear of flying. I've read falling and it honestly helped. I think, excuse me, I think a part of, I mean, the, the main reason that everybody has a fear of flying is because of the loss of control, which is just, I mean, a fact you lose can you you have you cede control when you step onto an aircraft as a passenger but i think when you read falling people understand that it's like oh you know what i'm a little bit more of an active participant in this environment than i realized i guess i'm not just a passive passenger i'm an active participant and i think that that as you were saying like looking at the crew in a different light and looking at passengers in a different light I hope this story doesn't scare people because I mean, yeah, it's scary, but I think it's more just intense. And I hope that people see themselves in a more active role on a flight than just a passive watcher. Yeah, I you you <laughs> hit the nail on the head with the loss of control. I used to be terrified yeah. of flying and I used to just like every time I would tense up, um, I like to think I've gotten better, but it is true. You do, you do lose control and you're 30,000 feet up and that's, that's a lot getting yeah. back to the whole trust, like a lot of trust to put in somebody you don't know. And I think that's why I also knew when I had the idea for this story, I, I knew it was such a concept because I realized that that lack of control look on a on a flight like the pilots are the people that have control of the flight right in this story that control is taken away from the captain and I thought that that was a fascinating angle to look at of okay what does he do in that situation because it is about control and understanding as a human, if you're a passenger, if you're a flight attendant, if you're a pilot, if you're someone on the ground, if you're just watching, like, what is the extent of my control? So what are you working on now? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm working on my next book all day. I'm, I'm going to finish this and go right back to work. Uh, and I'm being as tight lipped on this one as I was on the first one. So. So with the this book you didn't like tell anyone and it was just kind of like surprise absolutely I pretty much exactly that yeah I told people and essentially on a need-to-know basis like my family found out I was writing a book when like just before they were going to stage an intervention of like are you leading a double life like what is going <laughs> on we're concerned you hole up in your apartment for like days at a time we're very concerned so like they found out I was writing a book you know deep into the process only because I I didn't want the intervention um and then after that really I only told people on a need to know basis I I told a handful of pilots and flight attendants that I trusted because I needed someone to you know read the manuscript and tell me what I was getting right and what I was getting wrong. Um, Cause I can only see so much from the other side of the cockpit door. So um, yeah, very, very, very few people in my life knew that I was even doing this, um, which is why when it went public that I had written a book and that it was being published and it was such a big deal. I had very close friends and family who were texting me like, this is amazing, congratulations. You wrote a book? Like <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, I, I really, I really kept it pretty quiet. That's awesome. How long did it take you to sell? Well, uh, depends on what aspect you're, I'm, I'm telling for the process, the process for me to sell an agent and to, which, you know, I'm publishing is you have to have an agent to get, you know, get your, get your manuscript in the door. Um, the process to get an agent was 
nothing but uphill. I queried 41 different agents, all of whom said no. And it was only my 42nd submission um, that I got a yes, my one and only yes. So that process was long and hard and every rejection was deeply felt, uh, but um, I guess I could rely on, you know, some of my thick skin that was left from my first time in New York attempting, uh, you know, something that was nothing but abject failure. Um, but so that process was really uphill and really hard. And then we worked um, almost all of 2020. I was just holed up here in my house by myself, making the manuscript um, and the story exactly what it needed to be to where we felt comfortable saying, all right, let's, let's start shopping this and see if, if we get any bites. And um, I was gearing up for another process like that. I was gearing up for 41 more rejections. I was, you know, um, ready to go. And then somehow the first house that we took it to said immediately, we love it, we want it. Um, and yeah. That's awesome. So did you know, like as the book was being produced that it would be a summer? seller or any of that? I focused on just telling the story as best I could tell it. And any questions like that, I was like, I'm going to leave that to, to smarter, better people than I. I'm just going to focus on these characters and how to get them in and out of trouble. Because everyone who's been raving about it, librarians, booksellers, other authors, has just been like, it's going to be like, you know, the season's bestseller beach reads, everything. And I mean, we always talk about don't judge a book by its cover, but you totally can because the cover is really cool. The cover is stunning. I mean, the cover is just when I when I was sent, you know, the, the image, I opened up the email and I was like, hey, this is what we think for the cover. What do you think? And I opened up the image and I just stared at my computer screen for like five minutes because I was just like, that's it. It's that's that's it it's it's stunning and i think the timing of um to 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 what you were saying about you know the the summer beach read it's like look i think that's what summer's for right you know we're all looking for an escape we're looking for something you know to to disappear to while we're laying on the beach while we're having a break and i think right now that you know we're coming out of we're beginning to 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 feel like we can see the light at the end of the tunnel for what the last year has been so difficult for all of us with COVID and the lockdowns and everything. I think we're all just craving that fun escape to just sort of disappear into to a little bit of fun. And so I think the timing is is good and, and I'm I'm thrilled that falling might be able to be that fun escape for people this summer. Everybody oh, pick definitely. up Pick up falling, whether it be at your public library, your local bookshop.org, or if you're taking that first trip or 15th trip, whatever it is, <laughs> and you see it in the uh, airport bookshop. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. No, I, it's great because listeners, readers, like, if you, it, you said it perfectly that, like, it, that fun escape and, gets your heart pumping, which is what a lot of a lot of people like out of books. And the fact that you got really rave reviews from very well-known authors that write in a similar genre. Like, guys, you like James Patterson? He loved it. You like Lee Child? He also loved it. Like, bestsellers that we have at our library are just like, no, guys, like, pick up this book. It's great. And I have to say, one of my favorite reviews was um, from someone that reviewed it and then posted about it on Instagram. I love that they wrote five out of five reliable cabin crew. I was just like, that's amazing. I wouldn't have thought to say that. Stacey, Jessica, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Always welcome back at the library. Open door invitation. We are now closing this chapter of Turn the Page podcast by Austin Public Libraries podcast. Once again, I'm Stacey Mentor, librarian joined by Jessica, community engagement specialist, and TJ Newman, author of Falling. Thank you for being our pilot for this yeah. episode. Oh, that's Ooh. what a good sign off. <laughs> I like that. I got an upgrade. All right. <laughs>
it's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode. Thank you.